Hey everyone, my name is Jack and in this video I wanted to give an update on the current credit environment surrounding real estate. There's been a lot of concern regarding debt, whether it be new debt or old debt, and things are changing pretty quickly. I want to tell you guys about an experience I just had this week with a couple of lenders, as well as talk about some of the national trends that we're seeing right now. Before getting into that, if you guys want to see more of this type of content on real estate, the markets, and investing, be sure to hit the like button so I know that you like this sort of content, so I'll create more of it. And please remember, I am not a financial advisor, and I'm just some guy on YouTube trying to get better financially, and all I ask is for a like in return, not for you to take my words as indestructible financial advice. Thanks. As I've mentioned many times on the channel before, I've been looking for a rental property in Indianapolis, Indiana. I live in Chicago right now, so this would be an out-of-state deal bought through an LLC with third-party management. It's been a lot harder than I would have thought, at least at my price range. I'm aiming for a multifamily building between $100,000 and $200,000, and there is a lot of deals in that range, but they go just as quickly. And I've been beat out despite making full asking price offers in a handful of cases just over the last month actually. But this week I was one of two competing buyers on a deal and I'll certainly let you know what happened in just a second. But first, I've been worried about the increasingly bleak credit environment. Since this pandemic first hit the United States, lenders started getting worried, they started raising standards requiring higher credit scores, bigger down payments, more solid proof of employment, and so on. But that was to be expected as many people were losing their jobs very quickly and many current borrowers were going to be unable to pay existing mortgages very soon. To prepare for this, I took out the vast majority of my HELOC, which was around $100,000, and it's spread out between mostly cash and also some stocks, bonds, REITs, some notes on Lending Club, and I also just opened a Fundrise account to put some money there too. Definitely subscribe so you don't miss any updates on my portfolio, including my monthly updates on my M1 Finance account. But for those of you who don't know what a HELOC is, that's a home equity line of credit. It's basically a giant credit card attached to your home. Check out my video linked above about HELOCs, but generally they're a great tool for taking the equity in your home and keeping it very flexible. It allows someone to take the money from their home's value and then use it elsewhere without actually having to sell the home. HELOCs are revolving, which means that you can pay down the balance and then use it again without having to open a new loan. Now, one reason I took my HELOC balance out now is because the interest rate is super low at only 2.25%. Of course, I do have to pay it all back at some point, but I'm paying a fairly small amount of interest to hold a lot of that on the sidelines right now. I really wanted to be sure that I was well equipped to scoop up a good deal or two if they came up within the next few months. But the bigger reason I took out the balance now is because I did not want to have my HELOC frozen by my lender. Lenders can and often do do this during rough times to limit their exposure. Even if you already have been approved for the line of credit, I did not want to expose myself to that risk and will instead pay a slight interest premium in the meantime. That I'm fine with. This is increasingly looking like a good move because Chase just stopped taking new applications for HELOCs and they cite uncertainty as the main reason. They're also apparently shifting their HELOC team to work on other mortgages to help work through all of the refinances that they have been swamped with over the last few weeks. Chase has also built up a huge reserve fund according to their earnings call from this week to prepare for all of the coming loan defaults and mortgage forbearances that they're gonna be having. I would imagine freezing or capping existing HELOCs might actually come next. And this already is after they've required mortgage borrowers to have at least 20% down and a 700 credit score. And Chase is a gigantic financial institution, not a smaller lender who may be more vulnerable like the one I have for my HELOC. So I covered my HELOC risk by taking the money out, but I was still planning on having another lender on whatever deal I was going to pick up. I was just expecting to get a mortgage at something closer to 60% loan to value rather than 70 or 75% or something like that. I was just expecting worse terms on the loan, but I was still confident that I could get some sort of financing. And I had been communicating with a couple of lenders uh, up until about a week and a half ago, and they suggested that they were still lending pretty much as normally, and interest rates were still good because the Fed's rate drop from early March dropped things down a little bit. So I thought I could still get some financing, but the deal would have to just be a little bit more solid or I need to put up more cash up front. I have my cash from my HELOC draw to cover that already in addition to some other cash reserves, so I didn't think that was going to be a problem. So this week, I was one of two competing offers on a duplex in Indianapolis. It was listed for just under 130000 
and I offered 130,000 for it, and it's probably worth closer to 140,000 since it was already nicely finished, and it could pull between I'd say 750 to 850 dollars per side in rent. It was going to be a pretty strong deal in my view, even if I was very conservative with my vacancy costs and rent projections given the crisis. The seller's broker actually reached out to us and asked for proof of financing. Since I'm buying through an LLC, it's actually a little tougher to get a pre-approval letter quickly since the lender needs to see the property first and make its own projections to then give you a term sheet. The property is the main criteria for LLC lending and I would personally guarantee the loan as a second line of defense for the lender. This means that I would still be personally on the hook for the loan, but that the loan would be in my business's name, so it wouldn't actually show up on my personal credit history. But interest rates on loans like that are closer to about 5% annually right now but can definitely get lower for more experienced investors with better rapport. In other words, it's harder to have just a blanket pre-approval letter saying my business is approved for a mortgage of up to X dollars. I need a new pre-approval or term sheet for every property. So anyways, I reached out to my two go-to lenders who to this point had been giving me pre-approvals on properties that I was making offers on previously. But then I was in for a rude awakening. Both of them said that they were stopping lending. The only thing I could potentially get approved for was a one-year bridge loan at something like 8 to 10% interest with a bunch of fees. That's way too much risk for me to take on what should be a buy and hold deal for the long run, and this would raise the deal's cost immensely and make it a so-so or even bad deal. And that's before. I have the added risk of needing to refinance before year's end, and who knows what the credit environment will be in a year. But the important point is I was shut out of my long-term financing and had to bow out of the deal, which I'm pretty sure I offered the highest price on since the broker reached out to me for my lending info. Now I'm not sure what to do other than just to wait patiently for lending to open back up, Thus, I keep my eyes open for a smaller cash deal, but a lot of the sub $100,000 deals in Indiana are pretty rough or require a huge rehab budget. And there's no guarantee that I'll be able to rehab a property efficiently if quarantines get stricter in the near future. So what are my options? Well, one thing I'm considering is throwing most of my HELOC cash into something like M1 Finance in a mix of stocks, bonds, and REITs, and then taking money out as I need or want it through M1 Borrow, which is a relatively cheap margin loan of 3.5% interest on up to 35% of the portfolio value. In other words, if I put 10 grand into the account, I could instantly re-leverage $3,500 and take it back out to use it elsewhere without selling my stocks. You might call this debtception. But I have to be careful with that, since I would hate to see a huge chunk of that disappear with another market dip, which we very well may have, and then I would have no flexibility to invest that money elsewhere, since I'd want to leave it in the stock market to recover. That recovery could take many months, or even years, if the dip is bad enough. And I'll probably opt for something in between moving some of my money into my M1 account, but still keeping at least half of the HELOC funds in cash. Then at least some of it will be working, and I'll still have plenty set aside to get me through at least one deal. And I'll probably dollar cost average that money into M1 and slowly move it into the market to reduce some of the risks of short-term volatility. In the meantime, definitely check out my M1 Finance Brokerage Review linked above. I'll have an affiliate link in the description as well if you want to check them out and open your account there. They're a free brokerage with really nice features, mainly fractional shares and auto reinvesting, where any dividends or cash that you add to the account automatically get invested into any underweighted sections of your portfolio. This allows you to keep your target allocation as your portfolio values change. You can even copy other people's portfolios if you want to take ideas from other people or edit them. You you can do that with mine if you want by checking out my M1 Finance series because in each episode I include a link in the description that includes any changes that I may have made to the portfolio that month so you can copy it if you want to. Again, I'm not a financial advisor, just some guy. And if you guys want to get some free capital to invest with, check out my affiliate links in the description below to get yourself three free stocks by signing up for Weeble and Robinhood. You can sell those stocks right after getting them and close your accounts. I really don't care. They're free stocks on free brokerages, so get your free money. It might only be a few bucks worth of stocks, but I got 20 bucks worth of stocks when I opened my Weeble account, so you might as well take advantage of it too. You apparently can get a stock worth up to $1,400 when you open an account with Weeble and $200 when you open it with Robinhood. Let me know what stocks you guys get so I know if these promotions are working well. Well, that's all I've got for today. If you liked this video, like it. 
since it helps the channel out a lot. If you want to see more content on real estate, investing, and other personal finance topics, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new updates. I post new videos every single week and wouldn't want you guys to miss out. Have you had any experiences with trying to open new credit during this unprecedented time? Please let me know in the comments below, but until next time, take care.